Yo, Ski, what's up, everybody, man? Y'all know who I be. It's your man, Pooh, C-Y-G-G. Now, today, I'm about to be talking about the top five best fill-ins for the sports network shows. Like, so, for example, what I mean by this is when people like Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp aren't on the show, or when, you know, Stephen A. Smith is gone away from the show, him and Max Kellerman, who are the best people to fill in for their positions to make the show more entertaining, to make people at least want to somewhat watch the show while they are absent. Now, just like some of my other top five videos, I will be excluding some people like Reggie Bush. Now, honestly, I do think Reggie Bush does a great job whenever he's called in to speak on, you know, any type of sports related topics, especially concerning football. I feel like he has a lot of knowledge of it because the guy was a great player. I mean, of course, a lot of people will say he was a subpar running back. But in my case, man, I feel like Reggie Bush was a was an actual good player, man. And he has a lot of knowledge about the game, but he doesn't really serve as a fill-in as much as he serves as a guest. And the same thing goes for Chris Canty, man. When Chris Canty is on First Things First, he's not really a fill-in because sometimes he usually just joins the debate along with um, Nick Wright and Chris Carter. And last but not least would be Damian Woody, man, because Damian Woody does not really, he's not really a fill-in himself. He's more of a guy that joins the debate anytime uh, Max and Stephen A is on the show. But with that being said, man, let's jump into the countdown. So starting off the countdown at number five, we have Dominique Foxworth, man. Now, I understand a lot of people are going to be like, wow, why did you put Dominique Foxworth, man? I actually feel like Dominique Foxworth, it, like he can make some good debates, man. The guy is actually smart. He has, you know, an intelligent perspective on sports and he can debate to a certain extent, man. Didn't win a championship does not mean that they were not a championship caliber team. We all agree that of the in the entire league, there were only a few teams that had championship, realistic championship aspiration. And with Chris Paul as their second best me, player, no, no, they had me, real no, championship no, no, aspirations. Now, in this case, basically what they were talking about is Chris Paul still an elite player, and they felt like I think Ryan Holland said that he wasn't an elite player for the like the last one or two years or something like that. And Dominique Foxworth responded by saying that if he wasn't an elite player, then how come anytime the Houston Rockets made it to the Western Conference Championships, people felt like, oh, I mean the Western Conference Finals, my bad. Anytime they made it to the Western Conference Finals, people felt like if they just had Chris Paul there being healthy enough, that the team could, you know, somehow make it to the NBA Finals. And with this, I actually agree with him. Also, this also happened to be on the same segment where Ryan Hollins just got up and just kept walking around for some odd reason, which I, I really don't know, which also brings me to another reason why Dominic Foxworth fits the number five spot is because compared to the other fill-ins, Dominic Foxworth is probably the best. Like if you had to choose between him and Ryan Hollins, I'm pretty sure 100% of people will pick Dominique Foxworth and at number four at number four we have Keyshawn Johnson now Keyshawn Johnson isn't a consistent fill-in but they have been trying to work him in as a fill-in more lately for first take now the reason why I put Keyshawn Johnson here is because when anytime he is on the debate desk with the other fill-ins he just seems like he knows way more and it just seems like he stands out even more compared to them. Like, for example. Just get out and produce, but be a model citizen. And I love the way but he's Odell... But he's not, you said a model citizen. What has Odell done that he's not a model citizen, right? He ain't won nothing. He but ain't won nothing. that doesn't make him not a model wins, citizen, he can't be dog. That doesn't look, make him look, not a model citizen because he I, hasn't I get, won. I want you to look at that, that list. Let's go. Let me see. Okay. Right. My whole point of that is, Jason Garrett does it to me hasn't, hasn't better yet, made any decisions, defining decisions in his coaching career that made you go, wow, I can't believe that they okay. did that. You, know, okay. you know what he has done? Now, if you look at Keyshawn Johnson, also, like, when he was talking about the, the reasons why he felt like, you know, Jason Garrett wasn't a top 10 coach, even if you go back to that video, he delves into it a little bit deeper. He talks about, he explains why he felt like every one of those coaches that were in the top 10 deserved to be in the top 10 over Jason Garrett and to be honest 
like I really like that argument and maybe it's because he was arguing with Max Kellerman and Dominic Foxworth even though Dominic Foxworth is on this list but compared to Ryan Hollis Dominic Foxworth is better but like I was saying man it just it seems like when he is put on the show and asked to debate with the other fill-ins as of lately as of the few times they have put him on he just seems to stand out amongst them all and that's just my opinion with that one and at the number three spot we have Greg Jennings. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, man. At first, when Greg Jennings was on Undisputed and First Things First and stuff like that, I didn't like him. The reason why, because I felt like everything he said was just negative towards Aaron Rodgers. But by God, when you put him on the sports table against the two guys that I have in the top five world sports commentator in Rob Parker and Jason McIntyre, he, he clearly is the only thing that makes the show watchable. In game, you're going to get some different looks, and he definitely got some different looks thrown at him. And so did his rookie head coach, Cliff Kingsbury. And let, let's just look at the landscape of who this Arizona Cardinals team is. And Basically, what happened in this debate, Rob Parker and Jason McIntyre. Oh my God! I like why is why is he still on this show? Oh my goodness! Basically, what they said was, "Oh my God, yeah, Kyler Murray is a fluke. He he did so good the first game, and then the second game he went out there and went three for eight. Oh yeah, he's not as good as you thought he was. He got sacked three times." And Greg Jennings was like, "Yo, the Arizona Cardinals were not known for having the best offensive line. I mean." You've seen what happened to David Johnson. You've seen what happened to Sam Bradford. You've seen what happened to Josh Rosen. Now, we don't expect it to somewhat happen to Kyler Murray. Also, you got to realize this guy is a rookie as well as his head coach, Cliff, Cl Cliff Kingsbury. This is his rookie year in the NFL coaching. So you have people at two rookie positions, and then you also have an offensive line that is not the best. Why do you guys expect this guy to just come out the gates being the next Patrick Mahomes? And I really appreciate Greg Jennings for coming out saying this and acknowledging those key things, those key factors that will play a part in Kyler Murray's year. That doesn't take away from him have, or being a good player. That just means that those are some obstacles he will have to overcome. And that team still has a lot to keep building on in order to be a great team that will support his talents, man. And compared to those two, man, like I said, he's the only thing that made sense and made the show watchable. And we move on from there into number two. Number two is Charlie Arnold. I, I think that's how you say her name, man. Oh, my God. Some of y'all might may know her from when she was in the WWE doing certain ring announcements. But, by God. Let, let's just look at this goddess. Like, look at her. Boy, oh, my goodness. Mm, 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 mm. Like, bro, I'm uh, number one, bro. Why, why hasn't she gotten Molly's job yet? Now, let me tell you something about her, man. Number one, she's gorgeous, of course. Not only that, but she's a great moderator to the point like she's not like Molly. She doesn't make sounds when she disagrees with something. Like, for example, I'm about to show you a clip. I don't want you to get offended. I don't want to hurt your feelings. But the answer is yes. Oh, God. And, and, and it's here's why. When Andrew Luck came out in the... Did you see how simple that was? Did you see? She didn't do like my like, oh my God, come on. Ah. She didn't do all that. She just did a, oh, come on. And just, that was it. That was it. It was no extra. It wasn't none of that, man. It was so good to the point, even Max invited her back into the combo of him. Charlie, if you're a Colts fan, you know the answer to this. It's not just about what was expected of him, but what we still believe he can but be. But he's delivered. And he isn't. Look, he's Dominique, delivered. with all due this respect. Is, don't, don't try. This is what I like about her. She's seen the debate going on. She didn't interrupt it. Even though she was asked a question, she could have inserted her answer right then because they invited her to, but she chose not to, man. And it's crazy because when I seen this, I just knew she was going to stay around forever. Give me the Giants. Can I play them three times? I'm not worried about the Redskins. Let's go. Thank you so much for watching ESPN. <laughs> Yo, that is a true depiction of how I felt a lot of first 
a lot of, I said first take, <laughs> I'm laughing. A lot of first take fans felt when they see Molly's face right after seeing her up there, man. No, no one wants to hurt Molly. Um, I feel like some people don't get a joke. So you always got to preference that for some reason for people who are idiots. Now, trust and understand me, like anytime Molly is not present, people love seeing Charlie, man. They love her. But, you know, she was a strong runner for number one, even though she does give her intake, but she's not the reason why people will tune into the show because she carries it. It's actually reserved for my number one person. And at the number one spot, we have none other than Chris Broussard. Now, the reason why I put Chris Broussard number one is because not only is he a person that you will see on the main desk debating the, you know, the, the actual show host or whatever, like, you know, Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp he's the best fill-in so even on first things first when nick wright or chris carter is not there he's that constant fill-in because people feel like they will always tune in to see what chris broussard has to say about a topic now of course i do have my thoughts about his football knowledge at times because he's not the you know the best person to talk about football but anytime it's a basketball related topic and the main you no know, show host aren't there People will literally tune in to see what Chris Broussard has to say about the topic. Like, he can literally carry all the other fill-ins. Now, that's just my opinion, man. Let me know what you think about this list, man. If you feel like I was wrong or if you feel like I missed out on some people that were actually useful fill-ins for the show, go down to the comments below and tell me. Until next time, it's your man, Pooh, C-Y-G-G, -G, and I'm out.